If you clicked on this video, then I'm sure you're familiar with the Eric Andre show on Adult Swim. Man, I remember watching it back when I was a freshman in high school, and for me, this was the gateway to absurdist humor. Growing up, I was an Eric Andre kid. Now, I'm an I think you should leave adult. Any of these little fuckers ever pop out of the fucking wall and say, Fuck, there's a horse cock in my room or a donkey d not to my knowledge. But anyways, I digress. What some fans of Eric's may or may not know is that he has an alter ego that he dropped one of the craziest projects I've ever heard under the alias Blarf. This album was published by Stone's Throw Records. Yes, the same label that published Doom, J Dilla, and Mad Lib Records. I know. That's crazy. But speaking of Stone's Throw, I wanted to mention the origin story of how Eric's relationship with the label started. In April 2021, Eric did an interview with NME. He recalls when he was around 19 to 21, he kind of throws around a couple different ages, so it's hard to tell. But he went to a music festival in Westchester, New York that the late great MF Doom was playing at. After his set, Eric ran backstage Got to see Doom without the mask, which is probably one of the biggest flexes that anybody could casually bring up. Eric explained to Doom that he was just getting out of college and was looking for an internship at Stone's Throw. Doom's entourage, his crew, was pretty hesitant at first, but the supervillain gave him an email to refer to, and Eric contacted the email, and that's how the partnership started. I think this is a really cool story, because honestly, if you want something, you can make it happen. If you got goals, if you got ambitions, you just gotta be the one to take initiative because anything is possible. All right, cool. Now we know how Eric first started out with the label, but now let's fast forward to June 26, 2019, where Eric's alter ego, Blarf, dropped his debut album, Cease and Desist. <laughs> We're gonna refer to Eric as Blarf when we're talking about his music now. So just a heads up going forward. Blarf describes this album in a very funny video he did with Vice where he explains to a random pedestrian, I downloaded an illegal crack version of Ableton and imported like every single thing I listened to the past 10 years. Pushed a bunch of buttons like I was playing Street Fighter. It sounds like if Jay Dilla in Knowledge fucked Aphex Twin and Venation Snares. The way this album is produced from a technical standpoint is terrible, but I can't even lie, I unironically love this album. There's this one YouTube comment on the music video for the song Banana, and I feel like this is the perfect description. I love how Blarf's music is good enough to tease musical genius before ripping all hopes of it away. Honestly, that couldn't have been summed up better. Anyways, let's talk about the tracks. There's nine of them, like I said. We're gonna go through them start to finish, and we're gonna rate them out of five. The first track is called Badass Bullshit Benjamin Buttons Butthole Assassin. When you first hear this, going into this album from start to finish, this opening track tells you everything you need to know about this project. I'd say one of my favorite parts on this track is the drum loop. something about it that's just really groovy i don't know towards the middle and end of this song the track starts to descend into madness i feel like this is what it sounds like when i get really high this is what everything sounds like i'm gonna give this opening track a 4.5 out of 5 like i said tells you everything you need to know about the album it's weird it's ballistic and with that said let's go on to the next track The second track is called Save It Babe. This song opens with a Lil Wayne interview, and I really like what he says here. I'm not an example for people on how to live their lives. I'm never in my life would I ever set out to be an example for people on how to live their lives. If you need an example for how to live, then you just shouldn't have been born. My man Carter himself 
saying some real stuff. The rest of the song consists of a Jimi Hendrix sample with the vocals chopped up. It's pretty cool. I don't really have a lot to say about it. It's very unorganized. It's very messy, which is something you're going to hear a lot in this album. I like it. It's cool. Because I don't have a lot to say about it, I'm going to give it a 2.5 out of 5. All right, now on to track three. Track three. This track is called Banana. <laughs> Right off the bat, I just gotta say, this is the song that made me want to make this video. Easily my favorite track on the album. The mixing and sampling on this track is really good, so no complaining from me. One of the samples that stood out to me was Osana Preludio from 1972. I heard this in another song that I discovered called The CIA is Trying to Kill Me by Nonfixin. I really want somebody to do a mix where it starts from Banana and then it changes to The CIA is Trying to Kill Me. That song's a banger, world ending beat right there. Banana gets a six out of five for me. My favorite track on the whole album easily. This is probably the most listenable song on the whole album too. This is a great go-to song if one of your friends doesn't know Blarf and you want to put them on. This song's just fire like that. I showed it to my mom and she even liked it. So there you go. The next two tracks on this album are interludes but before we get to that i'd like to start off by thanking our sponsor for financing the parts for this frankenstein monster i started a ko-fi page if you like what you see and you feel like supporting the channel then the link will be in the description there will also be benefits to donating and if you want to pledge monthly that's an option too since i'm currently not eligible for monetization this would be the only means of making any kind of income off of content creation but don't at all feel obligated to donate. Watching, liking, and subscribing, commenting, sharing, all of that helps just as much. If you're interested, click the link in the description. Track four is the first interlude and it's called Like That. There's not much to go off of based off this track, but the sample used sounds like somebody bashing a bunch of pots and pans around, and I'm not even gonna lie, it's fire. I think MC Ride would kill this beat. And for that, I'm gonna give it a three out of five, just for MC Ride alone. Track five is called, I don't know. This song is pretty rough. It's almost kind of sad. I don't know. There's something, you know, like the song, like the name of the title. I don't know. There's something sad about this song. So maybe that's where the meaning of the track comes in. Or maybe it's just because Blarf genuinely didn't know what to name this track. For me, I don't know is a two out of five. A lot of wretched vibes that come along with it. Those were the two interludes. So let's go on to the next track. Track six is called Hello Rhymes. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't like this when I first heard it, but I've listened to this album so many times. I've listened to this track so many times and this song really grew on me. Basically, the song is just a Busta Rhymes mashup and my neurodivergent brain loves the synths that go along with Busta's vocals. I'll give this one a three out of five. It's pretty cool. I like it. Oh God. Now on to track seven. <laughs> This next track is called I Worship Satan, and this song comes straight from hell. This shit sounds like if you took stage four and five of The Caretaker, and if you just like duplicated it, distorted it, and just mixed it all on top of each other. This is the song where I'm at the crib and I go like, y'all, let's, let's bump some Blarf. <laughs> Thank you.
The distortion lasts for 10 minutes and then it cuts to one of the samples. It still sounds very hellish, but I think based on the title, that's something we should expect. However, at 11 minutes, it cuts to the intro song from Reading Rainbow. Very ridiculous. And then if that's not ridiculous enough for you, then the intro of Love's Holiday by Earth, Wind & Fire comes in and the song just ends. It just abruptly ends. First time I heard this, I got a good kick out of it. I audibly laughed. I can't play it because this video is obviously gonna get copyright claimed up the ass. So Ko-Fi link in the description, by the way. But yeah, I'm gonna give I Worship Satan a Satan out of five. This track is from hell. I don't know what's real and what's not anymore, but that was fucking ridiculous. Track 8 is called Boo Ba or Boom Ba. For me, this is right up there with Banana as one of my favorites on the album. Very groovy. This song consists of 18 samples though, which was a nightmare to copy and paste through the script and through the website I used to find these samples. And listening to this track, you could tell there are 18 samples. Not exactly 18, but you could tell there are hella samples for sure. For me, this song has really huge Machine Girl vibes, and if I'm comparing anything to Machine Girl, that's a good sign. I love Machine Girl. But this is a great track right here. Five out of five, easily. And now we close this album with the last track, The Me and Me. If you guys couldn't tell at this point, I have really terrible music taste. I really like this ending track. There's something about it that I'm just like slowly bobbing my head to it. It's really groovy. The distortion too is a nice touch. I fuck with it. And besides that, basically what you heard from what I played, it's basically just a loop of that for about a minute and a half. It's not for everybody, but this one also grew on me. For this final track, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. And that's the end of Blarf's debut record, Cease and Desist. I think the title of the album is very self-explanatory. The reason we don't see this on Spotify or Apple Music is because none of these samples could probably get cleared. Well, I'm sure some of them can, but you get what I mean. And hell, I'm probably going to get a cease and desist letter too for even playing this music in my YouTube video. It's crazy. I think what Blarf managed to do here is nothing short of sensational. Sensational. When it comes to sample albums, this is definitely one of my favorites. It's just so weird and it just has that distinct Eric Andre style. It's basically the Eric Andre show just in an audio format and i really fuck with that will blarf make a comeback make a second album maybe a third maybe even do live performances who knows but whatever eric andre chooses to do musically in the future i'll definitely keep an eye out and that's about all i have to say on this topic i really hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm trying something new here i just want to talk about stuff that i like this video is half scripted half of just me going off on tangents but if you guys did watch all the way through i really appreciate you and if you want to do me a favor drop a like drop a comment share this video subscribe it helps me out a lot more than you could ever imagine and i'd love to hear your guys feedback on this video to go on another tangent i just want to say as this year is closing and we're headed into 2023 i just wanted to take a second to thank everybody for the crazy amount of support the channel has never been doing this well before and i'm so grateful for everybody who watches everybody who supports the fact that i could even make some of you guys smile that that means the world. Just know that you are greatly appreciated by me and I'm very thankful. Oh yeah, and uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. Buy my album, <laughs> it's free. I'm promoting a free album. We're just releasing on the internet for whatever reason. It's unlistenable too, it's fucking unlistenable. I dare you to get through like six minutes of my album.